The LSBLK command, or the list block command, lists your block devices. What are block devices? Those are typically your drives in the system, your, your storage devices. So these are going to be your hard drives, your SSDs, your NVMe devices. And the LSBLK command is very important, especially when you're working with drives, especially when you're thinking about possibly formatting a drive. Sometimes you need to know exactly which drive you're working with. So your basic LSBOK command is LSBOK, no flags, no options, and this will list all of your block devices. In my case, I have four SSDs in this computer. I also have an NVMe drive in this computer, and a part of the output on my computer, because I have snaps on my system, if you're using snap packages, any snaps you have installed on the system also are listed as loopback devices because snaps are mounted file systems that will appear in your LSBOK. BLK output, although you can remove these from the output should you wish. Now, my LSBLK, I don't have any drives that are mounted that I know are empty drives. I've got stuff on all of my drives, but if you've got drives that are empty, they are not part of the output by default. So if you want to see those, you need to do LSBLK-A for all, and by all, it would include any empty devices. By default, LSBLK uses human readable numbers, which is very nice. Instead of having this gigantic number of bytes, you get 953.9 gigabytes, for example, in this case. But if for some reason you want to see it in byte format, dash B will get rid of the human readable numbers and you will get the gigantic numbers and the byte sized numbers. One of the flags with LSBLK that I find most useful is dash F for file system, because sometimes you want to know what file system is on each of these drives. And if I do this, I'm gonna have to zoom out here. You can actually see the output because it's rather big. Actually, let me just rerun the command here and then zoom back in. You can see now I can see that, for example, all the loopback devices have a squash file system. These SSDs have an extend4 file system. This NVMe drive has an extend4 file system. Earlier, I mentioned sometimes you don't want to see all of the devices in the LSBLK output. Well, every device is assigned a uh, major device number. You have this here, M-A-J, and then colon M-I-N, so a major and minor number. So the major number is the device type. In this case, loopbacks are major device number seven. And if you don't want to see these, all you have to do is LSBLK-E for exclude, seven in this case, and now I get rid of all the loopback devices, which in this case is all of those snap packages, right? And now I just get my proper SSD drives. And of course, I also had the one NVMe drive and the SSD drives, it looks like their major number, if I scroll back up, is eight. NVMe is 259. So if I wanted to exclude the loopback devices plus the NVMe drive, I could tack on comma 259, no space between the commas. And now all I get is my SSD drives. Now with LSBOK, there is a ton of columns of information available that could be outputted. Uh, by default, this is what you're getting. You're getting name, major, minor, uh, RM, size, RO, type, and mount points, but you could add a bunch of other columns as well. And if you want to add columns of information, the way you do that is with lsblk dash O for output, and then you could give it the columns of information that you want to add. They need to be separated by commas. So if I do this here, name, comma, serial, comma, model, comma, etc. If I hit enter on all of this, you can see I get all of those columns of information. So you can create your own custom LSBLK output. Now, if you want to use the standard LSBLK output, but you want to add one additional column, what you could do LSBLK dash O for output and then do plus and then the column that you want to add in this case let's add the uuid column it's not there by default and if i zoom back out and rerun this you can see what we've added here i still didn't zoom out enough for that command to show there we go uh, obviously the uuids are rather long so i need to zoom out to fit it on the screen. Another cool flag with LSBLK is the dash T flag for topology. And if you do that, you get the 
typology, basically the structure of these devices. So it's a different kind of format. LSBOK does have a built-in way to sort itself. LSBOK-X is the sort flag. For example, if I did LSBOK-T and then dash X for sort, I can sort by any column that I decide. For example, let's go with the schedule column and you can see now we have sorted alphabetically by the schedule column. So MQ dash deadline was the first columns and then none after that. But if I wanted to sort by anything else, I could, I don't know, let's sort by alignment, all caps. And now we've sorted by alignment, which were all zeros. So that wasn't, that wasn't a great sort example. One final flag I want to show you is the dash I flag. What this does is instead of, if I do no flags here, LSBLK, you can see you get the tree structure here with these uh, fancy box characters. It's very nice, very easy to read, but sometimes you may prefer standard ASCII characters and you could do dash I in this case. And now those box drawing characters have been replaced by, in this case, just a back tick. Now, if you want to learn more about LSBLK, type man lsblk in the terminal to read the man page.